Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Mrs. Mamid and I'm a primary school teacher. In today's video, I will be sharing with you the five lessons for this week. And this week we are looking at newspaper reports. And within newspaper reports, we'll be looking at uh, learning more about the Great Fire of London, which is a topic we cover in year one. And some schools cover it in year one, some schools cover it in year two. So so um, this is why I chose this topic that we can use for both classes year one and year two and before we begin this is another lesson from Twinkle uh, which is a brilliant website for um, for all of the resources uh, for primary schools, secondary schools uh, for all of the subjects is it's absolutely brilliant so I am getting all of my ideas my resources and my lessons from Twinkle so let's begin our today's learning intention is to be able to explain what a newspaper report is and in order for you to be successful you should be able to name and identify features of newspaper reports such as headlines and captions and you should be able to discuss the reports you are going to read and explain what the report is about so let's begin Oh, that's very exciting. I have just received an email. And what does that email say? It says, help required. Dear Mrs. Mamoud, my name is Casey. I work for the primary news company. We write and publish newspapers for primary schools. We've recently been given a time machine and would like to use this to get reports from some important event in history. We have heard that you will be studying about the Great Fire of London with your class. We would like you to travel back in time to September 1666 to get the facts and pictures as well as talking to some witnesses. We would then like you to write a newspaper report from the Great Fire. We hope that you will be able to take on this very important task for us. Thank you, Casey, Primary News Company Editor. Oh, wow, how brilliant is that children so we will be using a time machine today to travel all the way back into the history and find out and actually see for ourselves what happened during the great fire of london and then hopefully we will be able to write a newspaper report so let's see so we have been asked to complete an important job for a newspaper. We have been asked to travel back in time, find out what happened, talk to witnesses, take or draw some pictures, write a newspaper report. So what do you think we need to know before we can complete this job successfully? I would like you to pause the video, turn to your parents or turn to your brothers or sisters, whoever your talk partner is for today, turn to your talk partner and tell them what do we need to do before we can complete this job successfully? What kind of things do we need to do now firstly what is a newspaper report to be able to write a good newspaper report we need to know what one looks and sounds like newspaper reports tell us about real life events that have happened we call this news they tell the readers what has happened, who it happened to, where it happened, when it happened, why it happened and how it all happened. So there are lots of questions in there. So we are, we are looking at what, where, who, when, why and how. Have you ever read a newspaper before? Now, what do newspaper reports look like? This is an example of a newspaper report. Now, this is called the one on the top, the headline. It is used to grab the reader's attention and make them want to read the report. It's usually very short. So in case, look at this one. It says, back to the earth with a bump. Do you think it's a catchy headline? I think it is. I would definitely want to find out what happened in there. 
Then in our newspaper report, you also have photographs or illustrations of the event or the people involved. We also have the small writing under the photograph and it's called a caption. It tells us about the picture um, as to what's happening in the picture or what the picture is about. Now, while we read the report, see if you can find out the following information. I'm going to read a bit from the report. And while I'm reading the report, every time you find one of these things from here, you find the answers of one of these questions from here, you're going to shout out, gotcha. Okay, so, uh, so you're looking for the information about what happened, who did it happen to, where did it happen? When did it happen? And you might even also be able to find why did it happen and how did it happen? So listen to the news very carefully and remember to shout out as soon as you find any key information. So what are you going to shout out? You're going to shout out, gotcha. Okay, so listen to the news carefully. Last week, Oh, did I hear you say gotcha? Yeah, that's right. This is when it happened. Last week, British astronaut Tim Peake returned home from an incredible six-month stay abroad, the International Space Station, alongside his crewmates Yuri Malenkenko and Timothy Copra. He is the first British astronaut to have lived on the ISS. Oh, did I hear another gotcha? The men were launched into space on 15th December 2015. The mission involved conducting experiments, testing out new technology and inspiring the next generation of space travellers. Peake told reporters that the best part of his mission was a spacewalk where he had to make a repair on the space station. Having circled the planet nearly 3,000 times, the crew returned home to Earth in a capsule, which reached spe speeds of up to 28,000 kilometers per hour. The touchdown was bumpy due to high winds. However, the astronauts landed safely in Kazakhstan or returning in good health. Having arrived back on solid ground, the astronauts were pulled out of the capsule and carried as their leg muscles were too weak to walk. While sitting in their spacesuits, the men were checked over by medical staff. During these checks, Peak was asked how it felt to be home. The smells of earth are so strong and it's wonderful to be back in the fresh air. So, let's see. Now, your task for today is in your group or pairs, with your parent, with your uh, siblings, you're going to investigate the newspaper report using a newspaper article okay so you can ask your uh, mommy or daddy to download you one from the internet or they can bring one home on the way back from shopping and then i want you to see if you can find a caption a headline a photograph or illustration in there and then your challenge is going to be if you can find out what happened, who it happened to, where it happened and when it happened. So one last time, this is the end of lesson one. We have quickly looked at all of the features of our newspaper report. Now you have to find yourself a newspaper report and I would like you to highlight all of the features that we have just spoken about on that newspaper article okay can you do it i'm sure you can brilliant so you can stop the video here and you can get started with this activity and i'm going to move on to day two lesson so what you're going to do now is you can stop the video you can finish your activity and then tomorrow when you're ready for day two activity you are going to start the video from day two 
So in this lesson, we're going to try and find out important information by reading and asking lots of questions. So today, um, yesterday, we were asked by a newspaper reporter to use a time machine to travel back into space to gather some information. But we didn't really go into space. The, in 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 the history uh, to find to gather information because first we had to find out what are the features of a good newspaper report and what sort of information we would be looking for but in today's lesson we are actually going to travel back in time to find all of our information so let's have a quick recap of what are the features of a newspaper report can you remember pause the video turn to your talk partner and tell them what were the features of a newspaper report could you find the headline could you find a photograph or illustration of the event could you find the small writing under the photograph called caption okay now adventures in time today is the day we are traveling back to 1666 you need to gather your equipment and prepare for launch with your news the city of london a different place than it is now but even then it was the center of england's trade and finance in the wee small hours of Saturday, September the 2nd, a fire started in Pudding Lane. Ooh, what date did she say? Can you remember? Can you quickly note it down? Right about there. Most people think it started in Thomas Farriner's bakery. <gasps> Whose bakery was it? Can you quickly note it down on your notepad? Just think about it. A tiny spark pops from the bakery oven. It's the end of a long, hot, dry summer. It's a cramped, higgledy-piggledy neighbourhood with buildings all made of wood. It doesn't take much for that spark to turn into a fire. And soon, the whole neighbourhood is in flames. Add a steady wind, blowing flames here, there, and everywhere, and soon the whole. Don't forget to take photos. City is ablaze. The great fire burned for four days. It was a total calamity. Ooh, can you note down how many days the fire lasted for? More than 13,000 houses went up in smoke. 90 churches and 44 livery companies were burnt to a crisp. <gasps> what other important information have you just found? Can you note it all down? Thus, the fire destroyed the Royal Exchange and St Paul's Cathedral. Hold on, that's not St Paul's Cathedral. It's the old St Paul's. You're thinking of the new St Paul's Cathedral, which was built after the Great Fire. The Lord Mayor did not know what to do. What can I do? People were running for their lives. Taking what they could carry and getting out of the city. Finally, King Charles II sent the Duke of York with the army and they exploded buildings to stop the fire from spreading. Ooh, another main event. What did just happen? What did they use to stop the fire from spreading? all the buildings were destroyed or damaged. You can see clear across the city from wall to wall. Have your pictures that you have taken ready with you and are we all ready? There we go. You can start the countdown with me. Close your eyes and let's see if you're ready to come back. 10, 9, 8, 
seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and blast off. Let's see. Welcome home. Well done, everyone. You did a fabulous job of gathering information from 1666 to use in your report. Now we are back. Look over everything you have collected for your report. Do you have everything you need? So your task for day two is to write down all the important information in bullet points, okay? You might have all of the important dates when I asked you to pause the video, when I paused the video in between, when we were in uh, back in time in 1666 and we are looking, we were looking at everything. Remember when I asked you to note down the information, so you might have some dates from there now i would like you to think very carefully close your eyes and think again about adding that extra information but remember it's still our um notes okay our rough notes our ideas so you don't have to write them in full sentences you're going to write them in bullet points but make sure that you are explaining them properly so for example you shouldn't only say 2nd of september or 3rd of september i don't know what you mean by 2nd of september or 3rd of september you have to tell me for example the fire started on 2nd of september okay we're not going to go into the detail how did it start when who started that where did it spread to and everything but just even your bullet point um should be clear okay so here you can stop the video okay if you want to go back again in time in past you can go back and see all of the things that you saw there and then which should help you to write your bullet points for today's task and then stop the video here and tomorrow you're going to come back to carry on with our lesson three so it's day three lesson three let's see what we're going to be doing today today you're going to be planning your newspaper reports. So in order for you to be successful, you should be able to choose which facts you will include. You can choose which picture you're going to include and you're going to plan your caption as well. Features of a newspaper report. Can you remember? Pause the video, turn to your partner and tell them what are the features of a newspaper report. It has a heading, a catchy heading, it has a photograph and it has a caption. Now, what's the story? These headlines are from newspaper reports about famous children's stories. Can you decide what each story is? Which words gave you the answer? Talk to your partner. So my first one is pants missing after alien spaceship spotted. Turn to your partner and tell them what story do you think they are from. If the slippers fits Prince to marry maid. Mm, I bet everybody can work this one out. Wolf in granny's clothing. Oh, you're too smart all of you. Well done for working them all out. Now, in order for us to plan our report for today, your task is that you're going to use the facts and pictures you gathered yesterday to help you plan for your report today. And before we can write a report, we need to plan what we are going to write about. So you might have noticed if you have been attending my lessons from the beginning that for our literacy lesson, we always start with um, identifying and exploring the features first. Then we explore the topic a bit more Then we plan to uh, to do our piece of writing so today's lesson is all about planning your report so i have this uh, a planning template for you you don't have to print anything off okay because you can simply just copy this template in your book and you can carry on from there so you are going to be working on your headline today so you have to think of a catchy headline remember we're talking about uh, the great fire of london you can choose any day you want to write about the day when the fire started or one day in between or 
the day when it stopped okay it's your choice then you should have an introduction so in your introduction just in one line you're going to explain what happened on that day uh, when did it happen and where did it happen just again in bullet points you're not going to write complete sentences you're not going to write full explanation because it's just a planning day okay so just bullet points then for your main story these are some of the questions that can help you make your plan okay so for your main story you're going to write in bullet points how did the event happen how uh, why did the fire spread so fast and what important buildings were destroyed and when do you remember that when we went back in time we found out all of that information so i hope that you have it all on your notepads so you can use that information to put in your planning okay so this was our lesson for today you can stop the video here use your notes from yesterday to put it in a structured plan okay you can rewind the video to have a look at the questions again i am going to have them in my description as well uh, like a planning template so you can have a look at there which will help you with your planning but remember one last time we are just planning today so you'll only be writing in bullet points so lesson four let's see today we are actually going to start writing a newspaper report about the great fire of london and in order for you to be successful you should be able to write a clear short headline you're going to write a caption to describe your picture that you're going to use in your newspaper report and you're going to write about events that have happened in full sentences and you should be able to use capital letters and full stop so remember children you should always write your sentences beginning with a capital letter and ending with a full stop so if you are in year one this is expected to make sure that every sentence begins with a capital letter and ends with a full stop and if you're in year two then you can include other forms of punctuation as well for example you can use um exclamation marks you can use inverted commas you can use commas in the list okay so try and um, use all of the writing skills that you have been learning at school so let's see as we read this newspaper report together use the checklist to see if it has all the features of a good report so what i'm going to be doing now is i'm going to be reading a newspaper report and while i'm reading it you have to listen to it carefully and shout out every time you hear one of these features so our features are include an eye-catching headline report the facts include a photograph or illustration include captions include eyewitness accounts and for punctuation use capital letters and full stops so this is my report let's have a look this is from monday 3rd of september london's burning oh that is my heading london was in chaos last night as a fire ripped through the city the fire which broke out in the early hours of Sunday morning, is thought to have begun in a bakery on Puddin Lane. It is suspected that the bakery fire was not fully put out and that embers from it fell on the nearby straw setting it alight. The baker, Thomas Thomas Farriner and his family managed to escape the inferno by clambering onto the roof and across to a neighbor's house. It is believed that a maid in the house died in the flames after being too frightened to climb out onto the roof. Hundreds of houses have been destroyed and people are feeling the flames with whatever they could carry. And people are fleeing the flames with whatever they can carry. Eyewitness Samuel Pepys described seeing the flames from his home. My maid woke me up during the night to tell me about the fire. It looked quite far away and we get lots of fire in London. So I went back to bed. However, my maid came again later to tell me that over 300 houses had been destroyed 
It's a terrible sight. People are leaving, carrying as much as they can, and nothing seems to be stopping the flames. King Charles has ordered that houses in the path of the fire are to be pulled down to try to stop the flames from spreading. However, dry weather and strong winds are helping the fire to spread and at the moment nothing seems to be slowing it down. And this is the picture of houses, houses burning and it says the fire was still burning out of control in the early hours of Monday morning. So do you agree that this was a good um, report? Did it have all of the features? Turn to your partner and tell them what do you think. Now today we are going to write our own newspaper report. Can you help to write it? Okay, so our title can be, our heading can be Huge Fire Destroys London. So your task is to uh, use this layout to write your own report and use your plan from the last lesson to help you. So remember when we were gathering notes, when we we're writing the planning today, you're going to use all of those resources to help you write the actual report. And we have actually discussed one report as well. So all of this should really help you to form your own report. Okay, so you already have a title. If you like this title, you can keep it or if you want to you can make your own title but remember you are going to start with a good introduction a catchy line to start with you are going to be writing all facts okay you have to put a picture in there as well you can draw it it doesn't have to be printed picture you can just draw it make sure you write the caption for your picture and uh, include an eyewitnesses uh, account okay so someone who was there who saw it and remember when you're writing make sure that you use capital letters and full stops and like i said before if you are a child in year two you can use other forms of punctuation as well so this is the lesson for today now you can stop the video here and you're going to use your notes you're going to use your planning to actually write your own report so if you want to you can uh, rewind the video and then um, have a look at the information that we have been gathering before or you can just go online and search using um, a, a search engine to see what other information can you write about choose the day that you want to write about and then Form your report so you can stop the video here and come back again tomorrow to see what our lesson is going to be so this is day five so for day five all you're going to be doing today is if you're still not finished with your report you can firstly finish your report but if you finish with your report i would like you to now proofread your report okay meaning you're going to read every single sentence word by word checking for your punctuation checking for your spellings checking for if there is any words missing from your sentences making sure that your sentences are making sense then if there is any mistakes that you find i would like you to correct your mistakes okay and it's always a good idea that you use a different colored pen or pencil to add it to your work so you can actually see how many mistakes you found and how well you were at proofreading your work okay so make sure that you are proofreading your work, you're finding all of your mistakes, you're correcting your work, and you can even make it even better, okay? So it's not only about proofreading, it's not only about finding mistakes, it's also about improving your work. So you might already have everything correct, okay? You might have, your the sentences might already be making sense, you might already have all of the punctuation in the right order, so what you can do today then is you can see if you can make it more exciting maybe by adding some adjectives in maybe by adding some suffixes in some adverbs in okay some other forms of punctuation in so always try to improve your work and then finally when you're happy with all of your work you're going to publish your work you're going to publish your report today okay so you're going to write it you write your report nicely with a catchy heading with um 
with a catchy heading and with pictures, captions, and facts for that day. Now, when you finish, make sure that you check it again to see if your report is making sense, if you've included facts, if you included pictures, captions, and your heading is short and catchy. Okay, and you can use the 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 checklist to help you write your report so this is the end of lesson five i really hope that you have enjoyed this lesson today please let me know how you're getting on or if there's anything else that i can help you with thank you so much for watching bye